On three. Oh, 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 hang on. I'm, I'm new at this. Two. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I gotta make sure I'm recording. It looks like a military force getting ready to strike. Hey, you guys ready? So ready. Let's listen to some music. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Los Lobos. Wife, daughter, boyfriend, son, sheeps. She's never been off road before, so that's gonna be. Please don't crash it. Scared. It can be scary and fun at the same time. You know, the rocks don't look like much from here, but when you get to them, all of a sudden you see how big they are, and it's pretty intimidating looking. Are they allowed to do that? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, that's cool, really. Yeah. You got to the very top, and you couldn't see a thing. Oh, that's a great view. Look at that. There literally is 100 activities going on at any point in time within camp. <laughs> It's like living on the outdoor channel, you know. Well, you can hold it on your head. You should have approximately a right angle going here. I put my car through the physical portion. <laughs> she puts the body through the physical portion. Way to go, you birds! You've got a family. You'll have plenty of things to keep your kids busy with. The pure essence of the event is the off-roading. I'll bring my Jeep home all muddy like this, and my mom and dad will go, and how old are you? My way, my way. Throttle. There's people that probably you would never expect to be taking their vehicles anywhere but on the highway. We have 2,500 vehicles with uh, approximately 10,000 people. We're at and this started 10 years ago. We've had over 65,000 people come to. It's a place where a bunch of people can get together and talk about their Jeeps and go four-wheeling and have concerts and just have a great time. A lot of it for me is the camaraderie. We get together with people we don't know, and in an hour, we're all good friends. <laughs> it's like you almost need a third hand to hold the steering wheel while you're waving. There's so many people to wave to. Hi. Hey. Let's hear a little whoop whoop. Woo! <laughs> we're going tubing. Bye. That's my brother, Matt, and my boyfriend, Sean. You know, people say, what? You're going to Jeep camp? See, Matt is raring to go. I don't know how many times they went, no, it's Camp Jeep. Camp Jeep! I welcome everybody to day one of Camp Jeep. Welcome, welcome to Camp Jeep, California. And they always ask, do you go camping there? Well, of course you don't. You can show them videos. Let you know I'm really in here. You can't explain it until you actually see it. Morning. Welcome. They see all these Jeeps, and, and they think that, you know, we're a gang. Great show. <laughs> We've been doing Camp Jeep since 1995. You guys having a good time? Yeah. The first ones were out in Colorado at Camp Hale, and we kind of outgrew Camp Hale. And they had to look for a bigger site, and here we are in Virginia today. And this year, for the first time, we're doing two Camp Jeeps, and we're going to go to Santa Barbara County, California. Every single person has something to do that they enjoy. So what we try to do is, is do a combination of things that are related to our product, things that are related to our history, and things that are related to their lifestyles. You get a lot of free stuff, and there's a lot of activities you can do. You know, start listing them off. Kayaking. Uh, the kayaking. Kayaking in the ocean. We saw a dolphin. That's the fun part. Scuba diving. All right. Tubing. Water's great. My favorite thing, Camp Jeep, was salsa dance. That's really fun. The Adventure Tower. Oh, How was it? It was really fun. Sweet. Oh, oh he's too old. <laughs> Anything you can do outdoors, they'll teach you, they'll show you. Like fly fishing, repelling, hiking. Orienteering, navigation, <laughs> and mountain biking and things like that. Ben, do some tricks for us. There's actual photographers showing you how how to take your your pictures out in nature. It just sort of whets your palate in terms of different things to do. I like rock climbing too. Roller skating jobbers, whatever they're called. My daughter tried the scuba diving, mountain climbing, the four wheeling, the four wheelers, the dirt bikes. And you think, boy, did I get them all? 
And, uh, and you never do. You always leave something out. And just great cooking classes. We did zip line this time. There you go. Now she wants to try skateboarding. We get to do all the rope climbing. My daughter likes the arts and crafts. I enjoyed making the CDs and the music videos. Future MTV stars. This is Jeep 101 Junior. Oh, a little road rage going on there. Someone drives just like their parents. Well, I'm going to do radio controlled cars. Yeah. I like to run around in kids' tent and goof off. It's noisy, but it's nice and cool. I think that's why all the parents are in here. The boys have had a great time on the, the climbing course. A couple of mountain goats going at it. They got professional BMX bike riders that come out and do stunts. Everything that they see on the ESPN and the outdoor channel and stuff, you know, it's stuff here we get to do. Oh, I enjoy the physical part of it. I like to do, like, swimming and lots of walking. I remember looking at all the Jeeps in the parking lot and how they are all jacked up. And they all have some sort of lift thingy on them. So we just kind of more gravitate towards the trail rides. Hey, Sean, are you nervous about four-wheeling? No, I got a few, I am. <laughs> we have a lot of fun on the Jeep trail. Go, 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 go! I get to drive my Jeep. <laughs> This is going to be Orrin's first trail ride. I remember in that first year when we were off-roading, I didn't realize that it, I could put my Jeep into four low when I was going off-road. I was driving around in four-wheel high, which just makes the engine work a lot harder and heats the transmission up and such. You know, we want to go on the trail ride. We've got to learn how to put it in four-wheel drive first. <laughs> and that's what we hear Jeep 101 will do. <laughs> That's the course where everybody who comes here wants to go to. To see what happens when they engage it in four-wheel drive. Clutch, clutch, brake. There you go. Woo! And we start them off easy with some tilts and some potholes. This is for articulation. Articulation. It's, right. If we had a vehicle right in front of us, you would see how the wheels and the axles work independently. you see the back wheel coming up. You'll feel it now as you're going over it. Nice and easy over the logs. There you go. OK, let up a little bit. There you go. <laughs> they go up a hill that's probably at a 50 degree angle or better, going up. You call it the sky view. And you're looking straight up at the sky. It's a lot steeper, a lot more scary than it looks here when you start to get onto it and you start to go up that hill. Instinctively, as they're going up, they start out fast. And as they get more excited, they seem to slow down. Now, no brake going down the other side. Yay. Just let off the throttle. See how slow it goes wow, down? Wow, OK. Isn't that amazing? That is great. Just take that experience, get that expanded comfort zone, move them out onto a trail, and they can really get a chance to see what the vehicle can do. Lauren's driving. Sean is the very lucky passenger. The guys in the cool orange shirts, those are my volunteer trail guides. We've got 165 volunteers helping us here on the trails. Boys and Ivy, some of you don't know what it looks like. I thought all my guides knew, but apparently not. Um, just getting started here on the trail. The big thing about Camp Chief is like somebody coming for the first time, there's trails that they can take and not feel intimidated right off the bat, you know. It's, it's like riding in a stagecoach, really cool. as I say, with all the dust, you know. <laughs> because you're behind some other vehicles, really. They can go out and have fun, have a good time with their family, they have a blast. The thrill, the water, the turns, the brush, the fresh air, it's an incredible experience. There's a troll under the bridge. You gotta pay five cents. No, Lauren, quit turning your wheel. No. Go, like shut up, shut up. Oh. Spectators running for their lives. You're good. <laughs> you gotta have people working together on a lot of these trail rides. Good. Little throttle. Because the person standing outside of your vehicle uh, can see what's going on a little bit more than you can. It'll go, it'll go. Otherwise, you know, if, if, if you're not paying attention, you might take a wrong line and... Gotta crawl on down. And sometimes a wrong line can be ending a very bad day. Come on, dude! Yeah. Even the people, even the, the, the person in back of you or one in front of you, they'll, they'll jump out right away. There's no and ifs or buts about it. It's all teamwork. Sounds good. So give it gas and go. Let's go. All right, just stop on the way down and wave. All right. And the guides are great. They tell you to get out the way yeah. when you're taking pictures. <laughs> they just do it for the love of four-wheeling. This is awesome. 
This is so awesome. This is awesome, Sean. Yeah! He likes to see Jeeps that are covered in mud. Mud is awesome. And the only clean area on the Jeep is where the windshield wiper makes its path. And if ours doesn't get quite that dirty, he wants to go back and do it again. This is what Camp Jeep's all about, the mud. Generally, he's the one out on the trail, you know, driving. And sometimes it tends to be a little bit of a battle. Who wants to drive? I'm, I'm driving. It's my <laughs> car I'm driving. <laughs> For the first course, anyway. <laughs> Keep going, throttle, throttle. You get a four wheel on once, you're a bit by the four wheel and bug. It's just like being a little kid. Yeah, if you're going like this and the Jeep, this Jeep, it's my hand's a Jeep. It's like if, if you get too fast, then you go two wheeling and then it's scary. That was more fun than scary. <laughs> I thought it was really cool just being out there and then driving around over rocks and stuff. If you're going like that, all you see. And if there's a tree here, all you see is the tree branches and the sky. You could hear them as they're going up. Ah, ah, ah. We proceeded down this mountain, and let me tell you, it was a, a really interesting introduction. There's this cliff, and you look out the window, and it's straight down. Like, ah! We were like, what, 7 and 11? And you know, we're just holding on for dear life. We had a few dented Jeeps by the time we got done, but it was such a good time, everybody working together. I got stuck on a rock a couple times. Is that okay? And you think, gosh, I'm never gonna be able to do that, and then you can, and it's very empowering. I'm used to, you know, you look for the flattest roads and you stay away from the holes and the bumps, and this year, looking for the biggest bump and the biggest hill and just seeing if, you know, you keep all four wheels on the ground. And it builds confidence in them, too, you know, so if there was a situation where they were in snowy weather or something like that and got off somewhere that would be able to deal with the situation maybe a little better. Well, the fact that it's the vehicle you drive every day on a road, you know, it takes you to work, takes the kids to school, takes you everywhere for groceries, and here you're taking it somewhere where no one would dare take their vehicle. You're driving up rocks and through water and up hills, and then the whole time you're praying, hoping that it does survive, but you really know in the back of your mind it's going to survive. Yeah. Give us some gas. It's okay, you're fine, you're fine. She stopped. Wonder why. Needs more lip gloss? We just don't know. Go, go, go. Okay, Lauren's stuck. Go Gotta go for guts, girl. Here she comes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Doing this. Good job. They're cheering her on. Woo! Holy cow. She did her first obstacle. They're clapping for her. Okay, is my light on? Does any light come on to tell you that it's recording? <laughs> This is going to be the Nicole movie. All the people out here enjoying themselves today, and we're about to go into the engineering technology center for a brief moment. I like seeing what is new, how things work. Well, I enjoy the round tables for owners to interact with the uh, engineering staff. Round tables, first thing to sign up every year, 10 years in a row. Because I get to give Definitely. the engineers my two cents worth. They want to talk. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. How many of you go off-road with your Wrangler? So we get to learn how they use their vehicles, what they like about them, what they don't like about them. And it's just great because it's feedback straight from the customers. It'd be nice to get the Dana 44 and the ABS together like a, for the a, Maybe a little bit beefier security, because I never have my Full-time four-wheel drive. Uh, no one off road the, top, the rear window wiper, if you could have uh, a delay. Definitely would like to see a stronger engine. I got engine. rid of it and went to something flatter, and it works great now. They know more details about their vehicle than some of the engineers do. If you can bring more torque to that engine, that would go a long ways to giving us the power that we need on the road. You have to realize when you go to a taller tire, you've dropped your axle ratio, you're going to have to raise your axle ratio back up. Yeah, but where does the torque band start on those engines, by the way? Little things that you wouldn't even know within a vehicle have been discussed and found out by talking to our owners. They've scratched them with their boots. So you want the top of the fender flares to be more like steps, huh? Good idea. 
They asked, how would you feel if we did away with the spare tire and just put run flat tires on the vehicles? How about keeping the round headlights? When the Wrangler went from square headlights to round headlights. That's just history. Yeah. Oh man, those round tables were incredible. Hands. Oh, you all like that one, yeah? The owners are amazing and they're so into their vehicles. Yeah, you can see it out here in the parking lot, just what people have done to their vehicles as far as modifications and customization of it. That's part of the Camp Jeep experience to be able to park in the parking lot and walk through and see what everybody else is driving, what they've done to their Jeep. It's, it, it's really cool. I've got a bed liner on the outside, you know, of course you've got to get a larger lift. So. And bigger tires. And bigger tires and then a larger lift again and bigger tires again. And then you got to change the gears to compensate for those bigger tires. We put, you know, five inches of suspension lift into it and some, some bigger tires and a winch and an air compressor and stronger and drive you shafts. Stuck, you got to put a winch on it. Yeah, winch, absolutely. We've got a winch now. And I want mine lifted and everything. <laughs> he needs a snorkel so he won't drown his Jeep. <laughs> He needs to lift it up higher, too. Yeah, I like all the lifted stuff, and I'm like, I want that kind of Jeep. We walk through there, we'll see something cool, and it's like, Dad, you have got to do this to your Jeep. It's like, oh, Dad, this would be so cool. Probably the thing that really stands out is just their passion for their vehicles. I mean, these people are buying a vehicle that, for the most part, they drive every day, and, you know, most of us just kind of take for granted. You know, you get in it, you turn the key, you drive it to work, you drive it home. These people love these vehicles. It's like part of the family. It's like a pet. It, you, it comes into your family, and it just becomes a part of your family, and it's really hard to part with it. It started from World War II, and, I mean, the bond between the GI and the Jeep is historic. We, we think that's pretty cool, especially when we get to see the tent, the old World War II, the military Jeeps and everything, how they've changed over the years and the different things they did to the Jeeps and stuff. Um, and seeing, you know, some of these shows, the history of it. Stories and movies throughout the years. Yeah, that's why I want to own a Jeep, you know. On Monday, September 23rd, 1940, at Camp Hullabird, Maryland, the Army's new four-wheel drive light command and reconnaissance car went on its first test drive. Major Herbert Laws said, I have driven every unit the services have purchased for the last 20 years. This vehicle is going to be absolutely outstanding. I believe this unit will make history. A Jeep and Ingenuity plus a borrowed ice cream freezer give American Third Army men their first ice cream on the Western Front. Why, there wasn't a darn thing the little giant couldn't do. It was designed just right. It was beautiful. It started with the GIs. Hundreds, thousands of them drove these rugged vehicles all through the war. They swore those power buggies would go any place and do anything. And in Chicago, more than a million sing and dance in the streets. Joy is unconfined. And when the war was over, they came back home and they wanted that Jeep for their day-to-day experiences and, and lifestyles. It went on to serve first the needs of, of farmers, but along the way, the GIs who had experienced the Jeep during the war and many of the people who had owned them for other peacetime purposes after the war realized that they had a great recreational vehicle on their hands. This was a vehicle they could take camping or fishing anywhere because it could go anywhere. And it was in the 50s when a group of folks out in California decided that they wanted to try to do some off-roading and they just kind of went off trails and through the water and so forth and that's what started the whole concept of Jeep Jamborees. And I went back to Detroit and sat down with my team and lo and behold Lou started scribbling on a, uh, a napkin and that's when we started working on doing this Camp Jeep program and, and Camp Jeep is just a bigger Jamboree with a lot more things going on. And all we did was try to take a lot of that dynamic and activities and give people an opportunity to meet each other from other states and have some fun over the weekend. Hey, Minnesota! Oh. It's more fun than a barrel of monkeys, I'll tell you that. That's why so many people come back. Our first Camp Jeep was summer of 1998 in Colorado. This is our ninth Camp Jeep. I've been to five. Uh, we've been to eight of them. I think about four or five. This will be my seventh. Five or six, I Six. I've been to eight. I've been to three camp Jeeps. This is my third. I've been to eight. I've been to four camp Jeeps. I've been to six camp Jeeps. I've been to four. She's been to 
four. four. Uh, this is my first Camp Jeep. But after the first one, I was hooked. Camp Jeep is one big, fabulous three-day party. And it ends so well with the party. That's really fun. There's usually a great surprise for the entertainment. We had Smash Mouth. Smash Mouth, I thought, was uh, very good. That's the concert that I really remember the most, and I like that one a lot. We were dancing, singing along. We had Kenny Loggins twice. Michael McDonald, Cheryl Crow, Blues Brothers. We've got Michelle Branch. I think every year there's always something that gets better and something to look forward to. Probably the most memorable for me was the Leanne Rhines. Oh, in the, the rain. rain. It was cold, it was rainy. And, you know, we put up with the rain and the cold, and it's great, it's phenomenal. The music that accompanies the fireworks, there's times where you actually get tears, you know, tears in your eyes. It's fun, it's a blast, and it's a great place to bring your kids. Well, it's gotta be up on the top. Look at that right. stop button. All you Jeep lovers, come on, put those hands together. Are you ready? Let's go. We keep coming back because it's just a thoroughly great time. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it's one of the reasons I've been here eight times. I would have been here ten times, but I didn't know about the first two. I guess I had to see it to believe it. It's almost as if it's a second home. Then I saw her face. I'm a believer. Yeah, it needs to be longer than three days. Yeah, we had a blast. We had a blast. You're entertained, you're educated, and you can't beat that. You get to participate. I really liked Camp Jeep because they had lots of things to do. I thought, wow, it looked like a kick in the pants. I'm going to go get this try. And the rest is history. It's such a great event every year. They can do things here that are not often done all together in one place. You know, it probably took the first hour of Camp Jeep number one to realize that we were on to something. We saw smiles the first year, and we're seeing smiles today. People just have a, have a blast. Whoever comes, they can have a good experience. It's been a great run. Thank you very much. When Craig grows up, this is what he wants. Payment for making this wonderful film for you. Please send one of these to my house. Thank you. Okay, gotta go. Bye. <laughs>